In lonely places around our coast live the men whose jobs it is to keep watch for enemies. In wartime, it was human foes against whom they kept constant guard day and night. Now nature herself is the enemy. For the Coast Guard, there is always a war on. A war against wind and waves, treacherous rocks, fierce gales, and all the many dangers that beset our shipping. No longer need the Coast Guard watch the sea for enemy submarines or the sky for hostile aircraft but he must still go out on daily patrol, for his main job now is life-saving and the helping of ships in distress. His senior officer tells him a storm is expected and points out danger spots, the rocks on which, but for their vigilance, many a ship might come to grief. In its early days, more than a century ago, the Coast Guard service was formed to prevent smuggling. Rum runners had good reason to fear its members. And this is still part of a Coast Guard's job, always to be on the lookout for suspicious looking vessels that might be trying to put something over on the customs authorities. All round the isolated parts of our seaboard, such as this lonely stretch of the Cornish coast, there are lookout posts from which Coast Guards keep continual vigil. For months, perhaps years, there will still be danger from drifting mines, a grim legacy of the war. And if one is sighted, it is the Coast Guard who must report the matter. And now a second member of the service is on his way to the lookout to help in mounting watch, the double banker, as Coast Guards call their men. Reports have to be made out of everything that happens, and when a plane or ship is sighted, a bearing must be taken and its position noted down. But the Coast Guard's most important task is rescue work, and the life-saving apparatus must be continually tested to make it sure it is ready for any emergency. Helpers are always on call at a moment's notice to man the lifelines. Speed in fixing the rocket gear is essential. Seconds make a vital difference when lives are in danger. The rocket is fired to the wreck, carrying with it 500 yards of rope, to which is fixed a breeches buoy, in which, one by one, the crew of the doomed ship will be hauled to safety. The tripod is set up, strong enough to face the fiercest gale. The signal is given, and the buoy starts on its downward journey. Another seafarer is snatched from the sea by the skill and care of the Coast Guard and their willing helpers. And when the job is done, the villagers take things easy in the local. They're all volunteers, and to them the saving of life is just part of the day's work. But right now they want to relax and forget about the sea which dominates their lives. The Coast Guard comes in for a drink and a bit of company with his friends, who have helped him so many times when the sea was in one of its angry moods. Here's to a clear sky and a calm sea tomorrow with no fear of the distress signal suddenly calling the landlord from behind the bar. The war against man may be over, but for the Coast Guard and his mates, the war against the sea goes on.